Hello again. In this bonus video I show how I create programming videos. Because of many people commenting and saying that they would like to see the whole process including all the mistakes and such, this video is completely uncut. So in a moment you will see my command line SPC music player. It is a fine player program, but does not have a shuffle function. If you give it a list of file names to play, it always picks the last file in the list no matter how many times you run it. I'm going to create a very small program that acts as a shuffle front end to the player. As I have explained previously in the comments of some of my videos, I'm using Windows primarily for just one purpose – to launch X terminals, from which I SSH to my Linux server, on which I do all my work. So the program begins with the main function. The file names to use will be passed as command line arguments. First, let's collect the file names into a vector, where they will be stored as std strings. Lastly, print the file names into the standard output. The shuffling should happen in the between of these two. Wait. How does the shuffle function work again? I can't remember. I think it changed in one of the newest versions of the C++ standard. Let's bring up the reference. This is a bit cumbersome, because I haven't installed any browser in this QM instance, so I have to use the Firefox installed in the Linux machine instead. Anyway, let's google the random shuffle function and bring up this invaluable slide. I use this daily. I'm not kidding, I use this C++ reference site every day, it's a treasure. So, the random shuffle function is not to be used anymore in any shape or form. You should use the shuffle function. But how does the last parameter of that function work? I honestly can't remember. Luckily there's example code in the bottom of this page. I'm just going to copy paste it, I'm sure no one will notice. There, there. Just change the name of the variable to make sure no one makes the connection. Of course, now I'm just kidding. I used the name R&D here because that's the same name that I used in the previous video, and it's a descriptive name. Random number device. Now that the program is complete, it is good time to add the required include statements. If you come from C background, then yes, this is the way it's done in C++. The standard include file names do not have a .h suffix. Your own files may and should have, of course. And of course I had to forget something. I guess this goes to extra length to prove that this is indeed an unedited video. Anyway, after the program compiles and it contains functionality I haven't yet tested, I will typically test it as anyone would. Here we can see that the list of file names is printed in a different order every time the program is run. Let's see how it interacts with the SPC music player. Alright, we got a different song. Looks like it passed the test. Now let's use the entire SPC music library instead of just this one game. Error. Looks like Linux doesn't want me to pass 70,000 file names on a single command line. Back to the drawing board it is. Instead of command line arguments, let's pass the file names in the standard input instead. We have to read them in a loop using std get line. Non empty lines will be added into the vector. The program no longer needs the command line arguments, so let's delete that craft. After that, we can recompile and test it. Let's see, how do I actually create this command? A moment of serious time, please. And here we go. Arriba, arriba! 
And when we run it again... Arriba! Arriba! Huh, that's odd. Arriba! Arriba! It's not shuffling, why is that? Arriba! Arriba! Oh, I see. I accidentally the shuffle line from the code. That's so much better. Alright, now we can move forward to the part that is actually the topic of this video. How do I make videos? Let's close off some unneeded windows first. This is a bit cumbersome because this is actually a tunneled SSH session in which I am running QEMU, so I can't use hotkeys like Alt Tab. First off, I will copy the C++ source code that I wrote into an input listing file. This listing file is a special file that choreographs or directs how the source code will be input in the actual video. Let's get back to that later. Each time I release a programming video, I make small changes to the editor that I use in the videos. Here you can see a part of the source code of the editor. It is a 16-bit DOS program written in Borland C++. One of the smallest changes that I have recently begun to do is that I check out the current outside temperature and put this number into the program. It serves no other purpose than to be there. Right now the temperature seems to be 19 degrees Celsius. Let's find the DOS box window again. Without the assistance of the Alt Tab hotkey I have to move some windows out of the way. This is not the case when I'm making videos normally, but right now I'm making a video out of the making of a video, so it's not exactly the normal situation. Recompiling the editor takes just a few seconds, even though the editor consists of like 4000 lines of code, and it's compiled under DOS emulation running under a virtual machine. This is just a testament to how little time these old compilers spent optimizing the program. If you look at the assembler language output generated by any of these old compilers, you can find almost a direct correlation between each assembler instruction and the source code line it was generated from. Not so in today's compilers. The large memory present in today's computers allows the compilers to keep and operate on all kinds of intermediate representations of the program that would have been unthinkable in the DOS era. I just copied the editor program into my project. I copied also a couple of other files from my previous video. When I made that video I copied them from the video before that and so on. One of these files is the configuration file that describes the file that I am going to write in this video. It tells where to change screen modes, where to scroll the window, where to mark something for copy-pasting, and where to pause for a moment. Now I'm just blanking each of these lists. Then let's get back to the source code listing file. To begin off I added previously a tab in the beginning of each line. In the tab section I will put the text entry directions. In the simplest form these text entry directions take the shape of a number. With these numbers I'm choreographing the order in which the source code lines will be input. Here you can see another detail. I'm choreographing that the rest of the include lines will be copied from the first one. In the next step I will be using the script to see the source code output in each phase. If there were any errors, such as impossible cursor navigations or edits outside the current window, I would see error messages here. For such a simple program as this, there are no errors at this time. Typically I would go between the previous two steps for a day or two, possibly editing the source code as well to make it most effortless to type. After I am satisfied with the whole choreography, 
The next step will be to generate actual keyboard input. When everything else is done, the last remaining step is to run DOSBox. DOSBox contains a built-in recording feature that doesn't care about how slowly or quickly DOSBox runs in the host system. This means that you can run even extremely slow programs in DOSBox, but in the recording it will appear as if it run in real time. Such is also the case of the editor here. Because of a number of reasons, DOSBox is not rendering in real time here. The recording that DOSBox is making right now will still be of perfect lossless quality. In fact, I have included the download link to that very file in the video description. I would show you, but I would have to edit this video to do that, and I promised I wouldn't edit the video. In any case, I hope this satisfies the curiosity of the 15 people who persisted this far in the video. Thank you for watching, and a big thanks to every single one of the over 8000 people who have subscribed to my channel so far. It brings me some joy to the day, a few times in a year, when one of my videos is linked on some big website, and hundreds of people suddenly come in and watch my videos, and when they ask questions that I can answer and help them with. I think most of my subscribers come from such, from such situations. So thank you everyone. Have a nice day. Bye.